For our first problem, let's imagine keeping track of the number of cookies in a cookie jar. So occasionally we will eat a cookie and then we will have less cookies in the cookie jar. We don't care what kind of cookies they are or how many chocolate chips they may have, just the number of cookies. So for our representation, we can choose just a number to represent the number of cookies. And that means a function like eat cookie will take as input that representation. So eat cookie will take a number and it happens that eat cookie will also return a number for the new number of cookies in the cookie jar. Now that we've finished the representation step, we move on to the example step. Whenever we write an example, we always start with open paren test. And I'm leaving room here for the call and the expected result. For the call part in an example, since we're writing an example for the eat cookie function, that means we always start open paren eat cookie. So whatever function you have is going to be open paren the name of the function. Again, when we're writing example, we've had no choices so far. We had open paren test open paren the name of the function that we're testing. Here's where we have a choice though. What we have to write next is some value that corresponds to the input to the function. And since our representation choice was number, we need to put some number here. I'm going to pick the number 10. And then to finish the example, we write down what we expect eat cookie of 10 to produce. If I had 10 cookies and I eat one of them, then I have nine cookies left. So here is one example. We can write some additional examples. Uh, it's a good idea when writing examples to check any boundary conditions. For example, in this case, what if I have zero cookies? What does it mean to eat a cookie? I'm going to say, and as part of writing down the examples, I end up making this refinement, that trying to eat a cookie when the cookie jar is empty just does nothing. The cookie jar stays empty. So that was step two. That was the example step. The next step is called the template step. And for a function like eat cookie, this is going to be very boring. We just set up the function, define eat cookie, uh, with some argument n, so all we're doing really is picking the argument name n. The type was already uh, picked in our representation step. And then in the body of the function, which we don't finish, we just write down n here as a reminder that that's what we have to work with. And then we'll have to fill in the rest around that. That's the end of the template step. So what a template is doing is setting up the function, making sure you know what the argument type is, and in the body setting things up with all the pieces you have to work with. In this case, just number. After the template step, we'll finish with the body step. And as you move into the body step, it's a good idea to look back at your examples that you set up to be tests eventually, because that can help you figure out what to do. So in this case, um, if we look at our first test here, eat cookie of 10, that means, of course, that n is standing for the number 10 in that particular case. And how did we get the number 9 that we result want? We could just subtract 1 from it. Um, that'll work for this other example, 1 minus 1 is 0. In this last example, though, uh, we don't want to subtract 1 from 0. So looking at our examples, we discover that we need a, a conditional here. As long as n is greater than 0, then we subtract 1 from it. Otherwise, we can just return 1. For our final step of the recipe, the test step, all we have to do is just run the test that we already wrote as the example steps. 